Controls here seem extremely strict. They're so big. Six to each side, with one directly across. Thirteen in all. Looks like each block has a name inscribed on it. You've got great eyesight. Hmm, let's see. Peter, Andrew, Boanerges, Thomas, John. Um... Philip, Matthew, Bartholomew, James, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas. And the last one? It appears to say Marian Kind. Marian Kind. I think I've heard that somewhere. It means the child of Mary. This is where we store all the really dangerous items. Stuff like this. Zohars! Actually, they're all emulators. And they've all been sealed, including the one we just retrieved. Why are these Zohars here? Well, our corporation does dabble a little in everything. Besides, these days, you can't get by without having something to deal with the Gnosis. And we definitely can't wait around for the Federation to get off its lazy butt. What's in the room across from here? Nothing pleasant, I'll tell you that much. You're not going to show us? Trust me, it ain't something you'd want to see. Even if we were to consider the diversity of your businesses, you're still a Foundation, right? I mean, the weaponry on this ship far outclassed those on any warship. Who are you people, anyway? We were more or less a government organization previously. Well, I guess if you want to see it that badly... You, you weren't gonna like it, didn't I? All of these specimens appear to be humans whose bodies turned into Gnosis. Transformed bodies. I've only heard of them before. Most people just turn white and shatter to pieces. But there are a few exceptions, and they end up like this. We've named this one Betty for now. It's hard to look straight at them, but I don't want to refer to them by some code name or number. It's just not right to treat the dead like mere objects. Is that a lady? She was a little girl. The last time we saw her. People turning into Gnosis? Have you learned anything about them? Not much. Plenty of Gnosis remains have been recovered to date. But nobody's learned a thing from them. You know what they're composed of? No. Sodium chloride. Plain old salt. Even their translucent bodies. They're mostly made up of water and sodium hydroxide. How can ordinary compounds like that form creatures like them? No one really knows why those who survive Gnosis encounters always turn into one of them. Some people think they're a new type of virus. Others say 
They're beings from another dimension who take on temporary forms in this one. Always? No exceptions? Nope. Not as far as I know. So they could be from another dimension? Wouldn't that mean that their true forms might exist somewhere else? Who knows? All that's certain is that they're hostile to humans. Not that such a sentiment is unique to them. Chief, is something wrong? You don't look so good. Huh? No, don't worry. It's nothing. So... So when did this all begin? Unofficially, phenomena like this have been occurring periodically over the past few centuries. But, after a certain incident, the Gnosis leapt into the forefront of history. A certain incident? The Milshin Conflict. Hmm? Joachim Mizrahi. It was he who opened Pandora's box and unleashed the Gnosis upon the galaxy. And we're all paying for his ambition. Joachim Mizrahi. The brilliant scientist who founded the Utik organization. Brilliant? He was a lunatic. Unable to bear his curiosity, he invited the Gnosis into our world. Lunatic? The Foundation was established after the war by the newly formed Second Milshan government to clean up and investigate the facts behind the incident. Technically, that's our real job. Problem is, the funding's tight in peacetime. On top of that, running the Foundation takes a staggering amount of money, and the management of these Zohars ain't cheap either. So, we ended up privatizing part of our operations and became a Foundation. We never imagined that some of our side businesses would hit it so big, though. Daddy... Daddy wasn't like that. think. Joachim Mizrahi the lunatic? Was Daddy really like that? Since Daddy built us, does that mean we aliens are bad people too? Momo, we were looking all over for you. Hello, Xion. What's wrong? You look kind of down. Xion, I... I was created by Joachim Mizrahi. He designed the 100 series Realians back when the Federation funded him. 
I know. Xi'an, I... Daddy wasn't a lunatic. I don't even know what I am. Identity diffusion. The eternal dilemma. Do you know about the environmental bugs on board this ship? They're actually nanomachines, you know. Used to keep enclosed spaces like this clean. I'd say that of all the things Professor Mizrahi or anyone else created, they rank up there pretty high. These bugs may be man-made, but they function as if they've existed all along. Almost as if they were meant to be. I think realians are the same. The only difference between us is the length of our histories. But regardless of our origins, each one of us has an important role to fulfill in this world. Besides, I really doubt Dr. Mizrahi was a dangerous person like everyone makes him out to be. And it's not just because of the environmental bugs. The work he did on realians was incredibly insightful. The fundamental gnosis research Professor Misrahi left behind played a critical role in the development of modern anti-gnosis technology. Thanks for the backup, Cosmos. I'm really glad to see you react like that. Empathizing with the feelings of others is a major factor in human relationships. Although I do not believe that the current situation called for me to act in an empathetic manner, I am pleased to be of service to you. <laughs> I think Cosmos is really funny. Too bad she doesn't take instruction very well. I never got to meet Daddy. But he used to talk to me all the time before I was born. It's all a little hazy, but I remember him telling me that I could become a real person if I did good deeds. Really? That's a wonderful memory to have. Uh-huh. Chief! Great news! After this ship arrives at the Kukai Foundation, they're gonna take us to Second Milsha. <laughs> Second Milsha? Really? Apparently, they have some work to take care of out there. The captain's still whining about repairing the Elsa, but... Some work? I wonder... Huh? Well, I'm sure they've got their own reasons, but don't you think it's a little strange that everyone's heading for Milsha? Not really. It's probably just a coincidence. I'm just glad we saved some money. Not to mention that this ship's a million times better equipped than the Elsa. And we'll have nothing to worry about if we run into the Gnosis again. Hey, speaking of which, did you check out your room? They all have jacuzzis and mini bars and... Hey, what's wrong, Chief? <sighs> nothing, nothing. I'm just jealous of how easily swayed you are.
How to spend their money. I can't wait to see the Durandal turn into a skyscraper. It's so beautiful. What? We're going to dock just like this? This ship's supposedly one of the most famous landmarks in the Foundation. I saw it in a travel guide on the Elsa. Oh, really? I never know. I don't check out vacation guides very often. Oh, look! We're docking! New Year's Eve is the best time to visit. The evening metropolis is quite a sight to behold with all her lights. Gainan Kukai, the managing director of the Kukai Foundation. Huh? Huh? Junior? What was that? Uh, nothing. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Kukai Foundation. I heard about your situation from Captain Matthews in Chaos. Is everything all right? Oh, uh, yes. Thank you for all your help. Enjoy your stay. What's wrong with me? Acting so rudely towards someone I just met. And you must be Momo. I've received word from Yuri Mizrahi of the Contact Subcommittee. We'll make sure you get to Milsha safely. 
From Mommy? Right. She told me to take good care of you. Can I talk to her? Well, she seemed pretty busy. Oh, I see. Why doesn't Mommy ever want to see me? I'll let you know as soon as I hear from her again. All right. Thank you very much. It can't be. That android Cosmos, she's got an incredible amount of potential, you know. There's no way she's just a prototype. I'm also concerned about how she resonated with the emulators. The Hilbert effect. I heard they lost the archetype. But it looks like there's more to this than it seems. And don't forget about her engineer. What was her name? Xion? I think she might be on to us. And our powers. No way. She's just an ordinary human. She might not be as ordinary as you think. I doubt it. She seems normal enough to me. I guess it's possible, though. After all, she's involved in the highest classified part of that project. The same one Helmer's involved in. The Zohar Project. Listen. Why don't we... lay off the Mizrahi talk for a while? Hmm. <laughs> Concerned about that Momo girl? Don't look at me like that! You think she likes being called the child of a madman? After all, we were both there when Mizrahi finally met his end. We saw what happened. You know that girl's a realian. Her memory might be imprinted with something. So you're saying the image she holds of Mizrahi is a false one? I don't know. That's why I want you to lay off when you're around her. At least for now, anyway. If you're that concerned about her, why don't you invite her down to the beach? I'm sure it'll help take her mind off of things. Man, I told you, it's not like that! Hey. <clears throat> What's this? Man, it's a stainless steel finished Makalov! With the original box and everything! I won it at a Lion's Heart auction. It was part of their antique weapons collection. This isn't like you. You're up to something. Not at all. I just thought I'd reward you for all the hard work you've done for us recently. Have I gone too far? <laughs> Don't go shooting that thing all over the place. Remember, you're older than I am. Try to act like it once in a while, all right? <laughs> Sweet! <sighs> it's open. Chief, we better get going soon. Yeah. What's wrong? Maybe it's just me, but you've been acting gloomy ever since we boarded this ship. Hmm? No. Really, it's nothing. What? You really think I'm acting like that? Yep. No doubt about it. Hmm. See? Just like that. <laughs> oh, I just have a lot on my mind. I'm sure that's all it is. Are you sure? If something's bothering you, I'd be more than happy to listen. Hey, Shion! Let's go out and play! Hmm? I'll wait for you over at the shuttle launch, so hurry, okay? See you there! Hmm.
Xi'an, would you laugh at me if I told you that I think she has a heart? Cosmos? Showing emotional behavior? I've run across some interesting phenomena. It's still pretty weak, of course. Almost like a tiny little pulse. Really? We should definitely keep an eye on that. Cosmos elemental data structure duplicates that of the human brain. So something like that's certainly not out of the question. She was empathizing with Momo back there. I wonder what her subconscious waves were like. Flatline. Oh well, nothing here at all. Well, what's the matter, Chief? You didn't come down to the beach just to stare at a screen all day, did you? Come on, Xi'an. Why don't you come and play with us? Sorry, in a bit. Are you working on Cosmos? It must be really tough. Ah, Cosmos. She's got a lot of black box areas that even we can't analyze. Black box? Yeah. We're painstakingly analyzing her bit by bit so that we can recreate her original form again. The only person who knew everything about Cosmos was Kevin. Uh, <laughs> Say, Alan, do you think Guinan and Junior are father and son? They look a little too far apart in age to be brothers. I've heard rumors here and there. Some say Guinan cloned himself, while others say Junior's his illegitimate son, or... I don't think he's a clone. Their genome arrays are a little too different for that. Wow. You can actually see that, Momo? I'm an observational realian. They're more than just siblings, or father and son. But at the same time, they're not identical either. Is that sort of thing possible? Their DNA only has to differ by 0.1% to make them different people, right? Hey, who's an illegitimate son? Uh, man, this beach is really great. It doesn't feel artificial at all. It's our latest product. You can even change the weather. You can't have blue skies all the time, right? Representative Helmer, busy as always, I see. Well, hello, Negredo. How are things going? Hmm. I don't really care for that name. My apologies. I'm still not accustomed to calling you Guinan. So, how can I help you? We're currently headed your way, and we're carrying an unusual package. So I thought it best to inform you. Oh? We secured it from an unexpected source. The Federation cruiser Woglinde. It's an emulator. The twelfth one. That matches the Utic records. Right. There's no question that it's responsible for the planetary disappearance. Assuming they haven't constructed any more, that's all of them. Aside from the original, of course. That's clearly impossible. Now that the only man who can create them is no longer alive. True enough. And one more thing. 
We have the Contact Subcommittee's 100 series prototype. How did that wind up in your hands? One of our passenger freighters rescued her 76 hours ago. Is the ability to attract that sort of coincidence another one of your special powers? Not a coincidence, but a probability, as a certain acquaintance might say. Anyway, I'm concerned with what the UTIC organization is up to. You may want to step up your precautions. I'll see what I can sniff out from the UMN Administration Bureau. We can locate any large-scale gate jumps from there. Excellent idea. Assuming they have no emulators in their possession. The odds are that they'll go after the original sealed on old Milsha. Not to mention... Udu. I don't know what their ultimate goal is. But we can't allow that thing to reawaken again, no matter what. Understood. We'll prepare for your arrival. I'm looking forward to seeing you again.
Current output is 5.806 LPP. Not even 3% of the required levels. In other words, you're saying it's impossible to open the door to Lost Jerusalem. Open the door? It's doubtful whether we can even find it. I've told you repeatedly that the emulators were mere supplements. You're the one who ignored that. Because of you, we've lost a valuable asset. I've done what I can with what we have, but it's not going to make much difference. Even Mizrahi couldn't pull this off without the original. So, have you finally come to acknowledge that lunatic's work? I'm just being objective. No one in the universe is as knowledgeable in this field as he was. We can't keep our commander waiting any longer. We'll proceed with Plan 401. Plan 401? That seems a bit extreme to me. The 100 series that Helmer's protege is babysitting, not only does it contain the entire record of Mizrahi's research, but the access code for the UMN transfer column to the sealed area of Old Milsha also resides in it. Treat it too roughly, and you'll lose everything. I'm well aware of the importance of Milsha and the Y data. That's why I'm using him. I do not like him. His eyes share the same look as Mizrahi's. The same as yours. <laughs> well, I'll be waiting for the good news. Pelagri, secure a channel to our commander. I want to report this and discuss our plans for manipulating the committee. 